So I'm going to invite our first presenter to come to the stage, who's going to share his story on what he's done. So please get ready, put your hands together, and welcome Tim Percival. Morning, everyone. Um, slightly scary and humbling to be up here. I remember being 18 months ago watching whichever mastermind it was, 14 or 15, and thinking, I'm never going to be up there, ever. And uh, here I am. So I will do my best to recount the last 18 months without bursting into tears or any other kind of emotion. Um, so this is me, picture of my hometown, which some of you might be able to guess, or, uh, or some of you at least know. Anyone know that, what that ship is? No, Brunel built that. Yes, it's Great Britain. It was the first ever passenger ocean liner. Um, used to sail the Ashes cricketers, particularly over to Australia. Um, and that sits in the harbour side in Bristol. Um, I live and work in Bristol. Um, it's an affluent southern city, so one that sort of terrifies you as a property investor. Um, it's ranked fifth as the most affluent city in Britain third most expensive to buy property, and apparently, according to Sunday Times, the best place to live, and I vouch for that, it's a fantastic place to live. And it's fam famous people like Banksy, have you heard of Banksy? Yeah. yeah. And Brunel, the, built the bridge and the Temple Mead station, and bits and pieces. Here's some pictures. Um, you've got the ship, top left, you've got the, the ship there in the harbour. Top right, um, I'm not told I'm not allowed to move over this side, but you've got the bridge just here. You've got whales in the distance and the channel and the Avon coming back, and this is the centre of Bristol here. All right. Georgian architecture mixed with eclecticness in Bristol, which gives it its uh, unique feel. Um, and this one's, again, I have to just come over. This is, this is the famous view of the suspension bridge here in Clifton. And I'm doing this for later on. One of my case studies is just here. So just remember that for later. Who am I? Family man. This is my family, wife in the middle. Which is my uh, little daughter on the left-hand side there, my son at the front. That's my goddaughter on the right at our wedding uh, two years ago. I'm a GP. I work at the Student Health Service in the University of Bristol. So I look after all the reprobate students. Um, I'm also a gynaecologist. I run a gynaecology service, and I don't want to offend anyone with this slide, but if anyone needs explanation, please let me know at the end. <laughs> so I spend a lot of my two days a week, like Maisie here, um, lifting flaps and uh, examining discharge. So we all have interesting jobs. Uh, so why do I want to do this? This is my dear mum. Um, Life is short, time is valuable. She died last summer. This was the year before. Um, she had a two-year battle against cancer. And uh, she was a very inspirational woman. And I'm going to move on before I start crying. Um, the NHS is incredibly stressful. Um, this is what I was like about 18 months ago. And interestingly, I walked in this morning, and junior doctors are about to go on strike again. Um, it's a pretty miserable place to work at the moment. It's very stressful. People are not wanting to do it anymore. Um, it's falling apart in, to a degree. Um, who knows where it's going to go, but it's not a nice place that I wanted to work in full time. And I want more time with my family. This is my new addition. This is Poppy, um, born 10 weeks ago, and she's a delight. So that's my reason why. And also, I never want to miss this. I missed this last year, and um, I don't want to miss anything like that ever again. So timeline. Um, January, it's about 18 months ago, I read Property Magic, um, as a lot of us did. Went to some Bristol pins. I thought, who is this Zuchi bloke? And thought, um, I better go and investigate. So I went to the Bristol pin and um, really enjoyed it, joined Pin Academy. I then went home to my wife and told her I was going to spend a fortune coming on the Accelerator course. And she said, you're effing crazy, were her words. So I said, well, no, I'm, it's, it's going to be good. So I went on it, I went on Mastermind. I went on Accelerator in April. And I signed up with 17 Mastermind straight afterwards and started with my coach in May last year. And hopefully, as we go on now, you'll see what a great value and great, awesome course this really is. And I proved my wife wrong, and she's now the biggest supporter of everything that we've done on Mastermind. Um, we started it formally in October uh, last year. So, my strategy, achieve financial freedom as soon as possible. 
Um, cash flow was first priority. Purchase of a tool possible, never sell a property. I think all the hard work goes in buying and setting up a property, why sell it? Um, we wanted to do high-end professional and student HMOs in Bristol. We noticed a gap. There are a lot of not very good quality HMOs in Bristol. We wanted to do good ones. I also work at the Student Health Service, so student HMOs made sense to me. Ensuite doubles if possible. I wanted to be an expert in my home market. I didn't want to go anywhere else. I love Bristol, and I wanted to prove everyone that worries about investing in Bristol uh, sort of wrong, I suppose, and, and do it there. Um, I wanted to do my first three deals with an experienced investor. I wanted to learn from those who'd done it before, who I uh, wanted to work with, and I freed up capital from my own home. It turns out, um, seven years ago, I, just after the, uh, the, the property crash, we got a BMV deal. I didn't know it at the time, on my house. My house has doubled in six years, and we managed to free up a large chunk from our own house. We also got investment from family and friends, so we had a pot of money that we had to try and rotate around projects. I wanted to avoid JVs after three deals. That wasn't because I, there's a particular problem with JVs, but there are, you know, there's certain problems with it, and also you get more profit from working on your own. We sourced deals through estate agents, pre-auction, right move, and landlord letters. Um, and I'll go through each of the deals with that. Um, and do what Simon says, I tried. Um, you have to adapt it to your market, which is why I've said mainly. So, timeline continued. December last year, first HMO completed and tenanted. Nine months later, I can now say that I've got the financial freedom I wanted. So I'll just go through a little bit more. These are the houses that we've um, acquired in the last um, year, really. Roughly in order from uh, here across and then down the bottom and across. I like traditional Bristol properties. So we don't buy in the outskirts. We try and get properties we like the look of. There's one there that, down here, which is what I call the ugly duckling, I suppose. And it's not quite so pretty, but you'll see later this is one of my case studies. This is the first one we did. Um, did this with it as a joint venture. All right, this is fully tenanted now. Purchased in July 2014, and we completed it just after the start of Mastermind in December. Second one here, this is another game with a joint venture partner, 10 bedroom HMO. This is a repossession that we found on Right Move. It came on Right Move, and we went out the very next day, the very same day, took it off the market with a proof of funds in our hand. So, so a few quick numbers. I'm going to go through just a, a couple of the properties quickly, and then a couple in a little bit more detail. Purchased this for 369, which is actually a brilliant deal looking back on it now. Value now is 495. We've referred it for 80,000 pounds. Monthly profit is 2,856 pounds, split between two of us, so 1,400 for myself. There's an annual profit of 34,000 pounds and an ROI of 30%. This is a deal which is ongoing, just being refurbished as we speak. My wife found this one. This was, wasn't sold at auction. This poor little lodge house no one wanted, and uh, we spotted it. It goes back twice as far as that. <coughs> And it's an ama amazingly nice, spacious five-bedroom HMO. We got this for about 180,000, and it's going to again be. A, there's some figures later on for these, but I haven't got time to go through all. This one's about to be tenanted in two weeks' time. Another seven-bed. This is my last joint venture. I did three. Um, this is the current property I've just tenanted. The last tenant yesterday, hot off the press, and I'll be going into this one in a bit more detail. Now, I thought I'd go into two in a bit more detail. Now, these I call my retiring one deal deals. This is the one, do you remember I pointed out by the suspension bridge? This is a, I've always wanted to own one of these properties. Now, this was owned by a student company who invested in about six cities in the country, but Bristol was not one of their usual cities. They were undercooking all the rents, and they wanted to just get rid of what they thought was a thorn in their side, and they could invest and get more money elsewhere. So we noticed that they were undercooking it. We also noticed they have big communal areas where we could create two more bedrooms. This is a 16 bedroom in an Article 4 zone, already with planning. So it's incredibly valuable in Bristol, in this area, right near the center. And we noticed we could increase it by two bedrooms to 18 at least. Um, it's grade two listed, so we shouldn't see any problems with doing the extra and create, turning one place into a... So this is currently 16 bed. We've just completed on this. It's a 16 bed. We're going to convert to an 18 bed. Purchased for 720,000 pounds. Its value, we, we've got a valuer who works with us. We get to every property to tell us what we're going to get so we know at the beginning. So it's going to be worth 850 when we've done it up to an 18 bedroom house. 50,000 to refurb it. 
this in the end will give us, um, once we get the rents up to what we know Bristol will have, nearly £5,000 profit solely to us a month. It's a yearly profit of 60000 Now, I looked at the average salary in Britain. It's uh, 26000 So this could take two people from work just on one strike. It's an ROI of 35%. Now, this is my, what I said, Ugly Duckling. I love this house. Um, it's uh, the one we've just tenanted yesterday. Now, on here, this is a one-bed flat just here. And there's a six-bedroom HMO around the outside. OK. Um, we purchased this for 275. The value post refurb is 350,000. 50,000 spent on the refurb. Monthly profit. We thought we were going to get a profit of around 1,600 on this. Our last property, the 10 bed, we did 530 pounds a room. Now we decided we were going to really, really make our properties high, as high end as we could, and push the rents. And we've really pushed them up, thinking we probably wouldn't get them. Now, um, the yearly profit on this is 32,000. Now the ROI on this was 41 percent in the end. And we managed to get £660 per ensuite room on this property when we thought we'd get 530 This is, I don't know whether you can see it in, in detail enough, but we try and make them really nice. And people were just, you know, love the rooms and were happy to pay the premium. So it's just a lesson we learned that if you give a good product, people will pay. Here's some figures for you because I'm running short of time, I think, already. Um, I'm not going to go through in too much detail, but you can see that the profits there, uh, they're only my profits, by the way, not the JV profits. Um, minimum sort of £600 up to a total of nearly £4,900. The total profit a month when these were all completed, about 14500 The property value is of £3.2 million. And a yearly profit is going to be nearly 175000 and an average ROI of 31%. And this is in a Bristol affluent city. And the way we've done this is by getting properties in a rec state, adding value that way, and then adding rooms. Uh, and by doing that, we've managed to leave as little money in as we can, and we've been able to recycle our funds across all of these deals. Um, regrets. Very few. Wish I'd done it before, years ago. Stressful life medicine. Um, I've been so busy. I've got, a, I've got two kids, new baby, wife's been pregnant through Mastermind, had a horrible pregnancy, as in not feeling very well, poor thing. Um, GP job, gynecology job, trying to fit all this in. I haven't had the time I would like for um, going on the forum and doing other bits, but hopefully I can change this in the future. Now, just a bit of a laugh. I took my father-in-law to a pin meeting. I think Simon heard this at the dinner before. He, I was paying him 8% for my, um, my lovely money that I was having. Took him to see about crowd property, and Simon, he made me pay him 10% now. So thank you, Simon, for that. Um, I've got an eight-bed project that just, we're just about to complete on, actually, a new one we're really excited about. I'll show you the picture in a minute. We're going to rebrand soon. We've just employed our own property manager now. She's working just for us, lettings and property manager. We headhunted her, and we're going to rebrand us for new logos, new everything, just to make us more professional looking. I'm going to reconsider my medical career. I could theoretically give up now, but actually... Since I'm doing less now, I've gone down from full-time to three days a week. I might cut down again to two days a week, but I'm actually quite enjoying it now. The discharge isn't quite so bad, all right? So <laughs> when you don't have to do it, you can, um, I think it does change your philosophy. And we'll just see. I'm going to give it six months, and we'll see how we are. My wife's already given up work. She's on maternity, but she's going to hand in a notice and then probably maybe do a bit of locum work to keep herself up to date, and then we'll just see where we go. Hopefully move into some development in the future. I'm going to have a break a minute, a break, slow down, enjoy, maybe do another couple of HMOs, because you, know, you get a system going, you may as well just repeat it a bit. Um, and my long-term goal is to change the Bristol skyline. I want to do a shard equivalent. Um, who knows whether I'll ever get around to that or not, but I'd like to do something that will be a glowing example, make Bristol better, because I love Bristol. This is my latest project, really excited. We're going to uh, open up the loft on this one. It's a massive house. It doesn't look that big. It go, the, the, the ground shelves off behind this, and it's actually already um, three and a half stories. Um, and we're going to open up the loft as well. This will be an eight-bedroom HMO, all en suite, and we should get premium rents. And uh, the numbers have all been increased by the amount of rent we just got on this latest property. Tips, get a strategy early, stick to it. Get your brand early. It's really helped me with my brand, my email signatures, my business cards, everything about my website, everything. 
Get a power team. I can't stress that enough. I've got an amazing power team, and they just do everything for me now. They know how I work, and I know how they work. Go to your hometown. If it works there, do it. I've proved you can do it even in affluent cities. It does work. Don't be afraid of bridging. I was terrified of bridging. Bridging has saved me doing JVs. Now, it's not, again, going against JVs, but it means then you, if you use bridging, bridging you can get now for you know, 8 to 10%. That's you know, same as a private. Um, don't be afraid of it. Right move is king. We found most of our deals on right move. We haven't used anything particularly, um, particularly uh, you know, complex. Release funds to get your first property and then use that expertise on that first project to enable investors to come to you. Because a lot of people say, well, why would I invest in you? Well, release funds for your first one, get that, and then they will invest with you once they see the, the nice work you do. Consider working with an experienced investor and think auction. It's exactly what we want. Lots of often grotty properties which people are trying to get rid of quickly. So pre and post auction. And affluent markets do work, and you don't have to buy a BMV. I've not bought one BMV. They work in Bristol at market value. And often they are BNV sort of because you're adding value to them. Mastermind's life changing. I've met so many new friends, extended family, and it's been a roller coaster, but it's just been the best. Um, in summary, 18 months ago I had my own home. I knew there was a thing called a mortgage, but having a mortgage is not good, is it? You have to pay it off. Work the rest of my life in a stressful job was the only option. Now, nine properties with 64 rooms, buy to let value of 3.2 million, profit of 174,000 a year, and an average ROI of 31%. Replace two GPs' incomes, and my message is, if I can do it, really, it's a cliche, but anyone can do it. So if I can be of any help, then please come and talk to me. Thank you. <laughs>